Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today when you guys should be watching this, the 10.0 update is now live, and of course this brings the Commander Skills rework, as well as a host of other new features, new ships, and some new modes. So what we're going to do today is go through the patch notes, link to the website with the patch notes is in the description down below, so feel free to check it out for yourself. Uh, so first off, I did get a little bit confused uh, yesterday. We're all human. We make mistakes. I, I misread the uh, update note. So the update, the client updated at Monday around uh, 10 p.m. or uh, Tuesday around 12 a.m. for my time zone. But the server update or when the update is actually installed isn't until later tonight for, for me. But anyway, when you guys are up and this video goes live, it should be up and out on just about uh, every server or should be coming out very soon. So we're going to go ahead and go through all the events and stuff happening in 10.0. And we're just going to go straight from the top. And I'll put any relevant artwork, uh, graphs or whatever in the video as well. Again, feel free to check out the link in the description down below if you want to check it out for yourself. So first off the bat, Lunar New Year. On update 10.0, we're going to celebrate the Lunar New Year. The event includes combat missions, daily shipments, new themed ships, commanders, and Journey to the West and Lunar New Year containers. On the occasion of this holiday, we've updated the Dragon Port and added new patches and flags. So the Dragon Port looks nice and revamped for those of you that like that port. It's uh, one of the more creative ports in the game. Definitely shows off uh, the more prettier side of the game as well. So combat mission groups, and this is starting on the 20th and it ends on the 17th. Completing combat missions and groups will bring you Journey to the West and Lunar New Year containers, as well as signals and themed camouflages. The final reward for completing the combat missions group is Anshan with a 6-point skill commander. Uh, this is the Tier 6 Pan European DD. And of course you get a port slot with that as well. So it looks like you can get the... Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so it says down here, the Journey to the West containers can drop one of the new ships. Uh, Wujing or Senjang and... Oh god, I probably butchered that. I'm sorry. Empowerment Sha Wujing and Tan Shenjang cam camouflage with themed commanders or either Baji or Wukong or other rewards. Like Senjang is... Um, I'm not sure which CV that is. Is that Saipan? I think I can't tell. It's it's definitely uh, all uh, Lunar New Year did it, did up, uh, and Wujing I believe that is I can't get a good look at it at it from here, but it looks like the the Alsace's I can't really tell the pictures. Oh here it is right here, Wujing. Oh yeah that that's the Alsace. That's the Alsace, um, and Shanjing is I think Saipan. It looks like it. Not hundred percent sure. Uh, the ship's commanders and camouflages are named after heroes of the Journey to the West novel of foremost celestial general Sha Wujing, a Buddhist monk, Tan Sanjang, the Monkey King, Sun Wukong, and sorcerer Zhu Baji. I, I know I probably butchered that, alright? Please note if deemed necessary balance changes may be applied to Wujing, so again I'm assuming that's the I'll say, so I don't know what, uh, what other uh, quad turreted battleship there is in the game. Uh, besides, of course, uh, I'll say, and Burgon. Lunar New Year containers can drop the new Pan Asian destroyer Finyang, or either Anshan, Irian, Loyang, Huang He, or Siliwangi. Or permanent camouflage for one of these ships or other rewards. And there's a nice little graph there uh, showing that off. So they can drop the Finyang. That's. That's interesting. That's, the, of course, the new Pan Asian DD. More on that in a moment. Daily shipments. During update 10.0, enter the game in the period between January 20th and February 3rd, inclusive to start getting valuable rewards via the daily shipment sections. Uh, you can get a total of 10 rewards through the 14 days that the shipments are available. That means you can skip four days out of the two weeks and still claim all the valuable rewards. Uh, it's like camouflage. Oh, that's the victory camouflage. That's actually a pretty good camouflage. Uh... 50,000 credits, 50,000 credits, more victory camo, 50,000 credits, victory camo, lunar new year container, 50 dubs, day of premium time, and then a uh, another container for the event. Of course, the commander skills update. I won't go too far into this as, of course, I've covered this extensively uh, coming up to today. 
So main changes, we've added new skills and changed some of the old ones. Each commander now has a separate skill section for each ship type. The skill section corresponding to the played ship type is active in battle. As skills have become more specialized and their total number has increased, the maximum possible number of skill points available to, to one commander has been increased from 19 to 21. We've added a skill recommendation system depending on the selected ship. Commanders with less than 21 skill points will additionally bring you elite commander XP and the amount of 5% of the commander XP gained per battle. We've added a new method of, of obtaining elite commander XP by dismissing unused commanders. We've revamped the interface of the commander skill recruitment, reassignment, and dismissal system. With the release of update 10.0, all your commander skills will automatically be re redistributed using a recommendation system. This way you'll get a skill build that's effective for each specific ship in the new system. You can take advantage of the opportunity to reset commander skills free of charge in update 10.0. Make sure to try out different combinations and find the ones that suit your playstyle. After the release of the update, additional balance corrections might be required. In case of significant changes going forward, we will provide additional opportunities to retrain your commanders for free. Alright, again, we've talked about this quite a lot in the, in the past couple of weeks. Uh, tomorrow, depending upon uh, how things go, I'm either going to bring you guys the first impressions of the new skill system or first impressions of Fen Yang. Discounts and bonuses and update 10.0. Uh, these run through the 20th of January through the 17th of February. To help you get familiar with the new commander skill system in update 10.0, commander skills can be reset free of charge. Upgrades can be demounted free of charge. The cost on the blooms to retrain commanders for different ships has been reduced by 90%, from 500 to 50 doubloons. In addition, to help you experiment with retraining commanders, uh, players with access level 8 and above will receive 500 dubs when they first log into the game during update 10.0. Update 10.0 features six special combat missions, one for each nation with more than one ship branch, the U.S., the Japan, uh, Japanese, the UK, the Soviet Union, Germany, and France. To complete each mission, each mission you need to earn 1,100 base XP in any number of battles playing a tier 7 to 10 ship in any battle type except training battles. The reward for each one is uh, 100 doubloons. In total, you can obtain up to 1,100 doubloons. This will be enough to perform commander resetting, uh, retraining 22 times in update 10.0. So basically, for this update, you have an opportunity to get a lot of free commander resets. So you'll be able to try out new skill types. And, you know, it is really good that they're doing it like this, but I would have preferred them to just waive the retraining fee for the entirety of this update. Because, again, they've even... Well, they, they, they didn't say if they make any big changes, they will uh, turn around and allow more free commander retraining and or reduce commander retraining and such. But I really think if they wanted to go that step further and just be like, hey, you know, this is a big change and it's a, you know, it's a scary change too. So just free retraining all around the board for, I would say, at least the first two, three weeks of this update. Um, but again, it is good that they're doing it like this, just that if they waived the Blooms fee altogether, I think that would have been going above and beyond. All right, Kiri Dockyard. The construction of Hizen continues until the end of update 10.0. You can complete shipyard combat missions and progress through 22 of the 26 shipbuilding phases. Purchasing phases, phases for doubloons will continue to be possible until the end of update 10.1. So we've got another this update and next update for the Kiri Dockyard. So still plenty of time to go ahead and get Hizen done. If you want to know if Hizen's a good ship or not, I have my first and second impressions review out for Hizen. Clan Brawls. Update 10.0 will see the 14th and 15th clan brawls fought in a 7v7 format. Brawls are open to all players, even if a player isn't currently in a clan. To participate, apply via the Create Division menu near the Battle button, then wait for an invitation to join a division. Only the player who creates a division for a brawl is required to be part of a clan. The other invitees do not have to belong to any clan at all. The inviting player should have the rank of clan recruiter. Or higher. So let's see. So, so, so the first clan brawl season, which is 14, will be 77 at tier 8 with one DD. Uh, so not, not one DD with DDs, uh, two and below battleships and cruisers. And the 15th season will be 77 at tier 10, again with DDs, uh, two or less battleships and cruisers. So no CVs this time around. You can play in the 14th and 15th clan brawls only during the prime time of your server. Strictures, of course, like I just said, no more than two BBs per team. Aircraft carriers are not permitted. Up to six mercenaries per division, so you just need one recruiter and then 
six other players. Uh, game maps and modes, the Islands of Ice, Mountain Range, Trident, Warrior's Path, and Sleeping Giant maps in the Arms Race mode. Hey! That's what I'm talking about. I like Arms Race. It's nice and fun, kind of just carefree. Uh, Clan Balls was pretty good last time around. The CVs did make it a little bit uh, uh, painful in some instances, but this time with no CVs, this should be good fun. Rewards for each clan, for each brawl, up to 5,000 coal, 3 million credits, 120,000 elite commander XP. Uh, the brawl rewards are divided equally between two chains of combat missions. Okay, so it's beginning on the 14th brawl is beginning on the 29th, and the 15th brawl is beginning on the 12th of February, and it's running through that weekend for both of them, so just uh, the next day. All right. So, other game changes, so, let's see, balance changes, now this is the, um, the secondary changes, like we've talked about before. Uh, so, like we said, with the German battleships, they, the German the French battleships and other nations are getting several secondary buffs. These are just the range buffs, the, the range buffs that which we have covered uh, before. And it looks like some other changes have been made. So the secondary battery firing range of the following ships has been reduced. Uh, parts of all secondary range has been decreased from 7 to 6.6 6 kilometers. Richtofen's, oh man, that kind of sucks. Richtofen's secondary range has been decreased from 7.2 to 6.9 kilometers. Um, Plymouth's secondary battery firing range has been increased from 6 to 7.25. I didn't even know Plymouth had secondary guns. Jeez, that's, uh, that, 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 that's funny. Okay, um... I'm guessing they do this because I think you can like go like uber stealth on these CVs now and they've said they don't want the secondary range to be greater than that of the detection range and I believe that is why it is oh yeah it says right there it says right there above it okay so that's why that's changed uh German tier 7 to 8 10 battleships like we talked about the secondary battery actually has been increased we talked about that before and some people were asking does that include premium ships yes it does every German battleship premium or not from tier 7 to tier 10 has gotten the secondary accuracy increase. Just clarifying that. Engine damage. When a ship's engine is critically damaged, it now continues to function at 20% efficiency instead of stopping entirely. What? That's a big change. So, blast stand isn't really needed? I mean, I guess if you want to have 50% efficiency, yeah, whatever last stand's called now. Okay, uh, so they land the Atlanta B, their main battery firing range has been increased from 11.1 to 13.3 kilometers. Colbert now is a speedy boy with its, with its acceleration and deceleration. Uh, the Tier 2 Italian cruiser Nino Bixio, acceleration and deceleration dynamics, dynamics have been decreased to standard values. Toronto, the Tier 3 Italian cruiser main battery reload time has been reduced from 12 to 11.2 seconds. Acceleration and deceleration dynamics have been decreased to standard values. Ooh, Oklahoma got a buff. Main battery reload time has been reduced from 40 to 38 seconds. That's lovely. Uh, Fiji, she got her deck armor increased from 38 to 51 millimeters. The different speeds of patrol fighters and research aircraft carriers, Ark Royal, uh, Eric Lovenhart, Graf Zeppelin, and Graf Zeppelin B have been increased to... Tier 4 is 187 knots, Tier 6 is 221 knots, Tier 8 is 235 knots, and Tier 10 is 266 knots. So that's that uh, buff that to the re to the um, fighters that we mentioned a little while ago. Because fighters right now, if you pop them, um, most aircraft carriers, planes can simply just hold W and proceed to ignore them. That's nice that they're getting that changed. Again, I'd like to see that change applied to catapult fighters as well. Uh, other note, of course, like we've talked about before, in 10.1, Georgia, Alaska, Mass, Thunder, and Smallland are moving are, are moving to out of the game, and they do say that Austin is going to be replacing some mares in the armory. Um, ooh, increase the range at which Shikishima's main battery salvos can be heard. Yes, 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 yes. So, if you didn't know, when Shikishima was first released... Its gun sound was godly. It's still very good, but it was godly. It was like, it sounded like you were fighting God with the amazingness of its gun sound. You could hear it clear across the map. It was like psychological warfare when you would hear Shikishima's guns go off. It was it was glorious, and they are adding that back in. Does it make up for its secondaries getting nerfed insanely hard with the Commander rework? No, but it's a nice touch that, you know, again, if you know me, I love the Shikishima's main battery gun sounds. 
I mean, other than that, there's a lot of tiny other changes, just some bug fixes and stuff, nothing too major. So that's update 10.0. Again, it should be live now for everybody to try out or going live in a few hours if you're catching this real early in the morning. So again, um, tomorrow's video probably will be a first impressions of the Commander rework. I'm going to be trying out, of course, the Germans first and see how all these changes have affected them. And I'll be letting you guys know how that goes. You guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way now to 25,000 subs. We just passed 21,900 a few days ago, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Wednesday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.